This is chapter 7, Chemical Reactions and Quantities. Section 7.5 is molar mass. The term molar mass refers to the mass of a one mole quantity of a substance. So it's the mass per mole for a given substance. Because of the way the mass units and the mole and Avogadro's number are all defined, for any element, the molar mass is the quantity in grams that equals the atomic mass of that element. What that means is that if you look in the periodic table and you see that the atomic mass of an element, for instance sodium, is given as 22.99, then one mole of sodium weighs the same amount, but in grams instead of AMU. So we're used to thinking about the atomic mass shown in the periodic table as the mass of one atom in atomic mass units, but it is also the mass of one mole of atoms in grams. To reiterate that point, the molar mass is the mass of one mole of an element expressed in grams. So to give a couple more examples, right, if you look in the periodic table and you see that carbon has a, an atomic mass of 12.01, that means that one mole of carbon weighs 12.01 grams. For lithium, one atom weighs 6.941 atomic mass units, and one mole of lithium atom weighs 6.941 grams. If you remember, the masses given on the periodic table are actually averaged over all the different isotopes. Uh, the reason that's useful is because when you weigh out a certain amount of a substance like carbon or lithium, you're naturally weighing out a mixture of different isotopes according to their natural abundance. And so the average is sort of naturally given in the mass that you weigh out for a one mole substance. Again, it's important to remember that these molar masses can just be read off of the periodic table. You're not going to be expected to memorize any of the masses for a particular element or anything like that. Some of them you may get used to just by using them frequently. So, for example, many people remember that carbon has a molar mass of about 12. It's actually 12.01, uh, which means it's 12.01 grams in one mole. So, in other words, if you count out 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon, that's one mole of carbon, and if you put them on a balance, the balance will read 12.01 grams. Now, of course, that's not the way we usually do it. We don't count atoms. Instead, we weigh things out by mass first, and then use the molar mass to backtrack and figure out how many actual moles or particles that is. Here you can see a couple of other examples, right? Silver is atomic number 47, and it has a mass of 107.9. So one mole of silver weighs 107.9 grams. One mole of sulfur, atomic number 16, it has a, an atomic mass of 32.07. So one mole of sulfur weighs 32.07 grams. So it's very easy to get the molar mass for a single element. You just look on the periodic table and you read the atomic mass and you just have to remember that that mass is given in grams if you're talking about a one mole quantity of the element. For a compound that's made up of several atoms or several different types of atoms, all you need to do is add together all of the different atoms within the formula, and that will tell you the molar mass of the formula. Okay? So for lithium carbonate, for example, this is an ionic compound, and it's composed of two lithium ions and one carbonate ion. And the carbonate ion itself is composed of a carbon atom and three oxygen atoms. So what that means is that for every mole of lithium carbonate we have, we have two moles of lithium atoms, one mole of carbon atoms, and three moles of oxygen atoms. So to figure out the mass of one formula unit of lithium carbonate, all we need to do is add up all of those parts. So step one is to actually obtain the masses, the individual masses for each element in the formula. So you look in the periodic table and you see that lithium has a molar mass of 6.941, carbon has a molar mass of 12.01 grams, and oxygen has a molar mass of 16.00 grams. On your periodic table, you may see uh, these rounded slightly differently. Oxygen, for example, will often be given as 15.999 or something like that. Uh, but if you round it to one or two decimal places, it just rounds to 16. So most of the time we take 16 for the molar mass of oxygen. The second step is to multiply the mass of each individual element by the number, the subscript, that indicates how many of those atoms there are in the formula. 
So in lithium carbonate, we have two lithium atoms, or really ions. Uh, so two times the mass of lithium gives us 13.88 grams. There's one carbon, uh, so that gives us 12.01 grams. And then there's three oxygens, and three times 16 gives us 48 grams from the oxygen. So these are the contributions from the three different elements in lithium carbonate. To get the total mass, we just add them together. Okay? Two moles of lithium plus one mole of carbon plus three moles of oxygen is how you get one mole of lithium carbonate. And so if you add up the individual masses, then you get a total mass of 73.89 grams for lithium carbonate. Now, sometimes the uh, molar mass will be given with a unit that shows you grams per mole. Uh, but this way is actually an even more useful way of looking at it. If you consider the molar mass to be an equation or a, a relationship between a mole and how much a mole weighs, right? So in this case, one mole equals 73.89 grams. And we can use this equation, this relationship, to uh, create two different conversion factors and then convert back and forth between moles of lithium carbonate and grams of lithium carbonate. And that's something that we want to do quite frequently in chemistry. Here we see what a one mole quantity looks like for several different substances. Uh, we have regular elemental sulfur, we have iron, we have sodium chloride, which is just table salt, potassium dichromate, and the last one is sucrose, a type of sugar. Okay? And you can see that they all look very different. So a one mole quantity of the individual things looks very different, and they have different masses. So for sulfur, you're talking about individual sulfur atoms, and each sulfur atom uh, has a mass of 32.07 atomic mass units. So a mole of sulfur atoms weighs 32.07 grams. For iron, the individual iron atoms uh, weigh 55.85 AMU, and so a mole of them weighs 55.85 grams. And then we get to compounds, where you have to look at the entire formula, right? So sodium chloride, if you add the mass of sodium and chloride together, you get 58.44 grams per mole. So one mole of this compound is really one mole of sodium ions plus one mole of chloride ions. For potassium dichromate, you have to add together the mass of two potassiums, two chromium atoms, and seven oxygen atoms. And so you end up with a mass of 294.2 grams for every mole. And then in sucrose, these are large covalent molecules. You have 12 carbons, 22 hydrogens, and 11 oxygens, and those all add up to 342.3 grams. So you can see that just because you have a mole of something, uh, the mass is different depending on what the actual substance is. Okay? Just like a dozen feathers weighs a lot less than a dozen bricks, well, a mole of sulfur weighs a lot less than a mole of sucrose. So let's do another example. We can calculate the molar mass of ethanol, the formula C2H6O. And again, we begin just by finding the individual masses of all of the elements in the formula. So carbon has a molar mass of 12.01 grams per mole, hydrogen is 1.01 grams per mole, and oxygen is 16 grams per mole. And then we need to recognize that we might have multiple atoms of one particular element in the formula. So for carbon, we have 2. So 2 times 12.01 gives us 24.02. Uh, there are six hydrogens, and that gives us a total of 6.06 .06 grams. Uh, and from the one oxygen, we get another 16 grams. Add these all together, and you find that the molar mass for ethanol is 46.08 grams.